couple years ago, spring day, I was on my way to an appointment. Made a turn onto a country road, county road, and saw one of these signs. Bridge out, two miles. But I turned anyway. It said local traffic maintained. And I'm as local as anybody else. Plus, I thought that my road, uh, the next turn was going to be before the bridge. So I traveled down the road, and I came to the barricade. I was wrong. My road was after the bridge. Barricade, bridge out, and I could see through the barricade that the bridge was indeed out. And not only a little bit out, but all the way out. And I could see that it was a long way down. And there I was. I could see where I wanted to go. I had no way to get there because the bridge was out. Yeah. Anybody ever face a bridge <laughs> out? Yeah. As we uh, continue to move into 2015 and continue to work on making it different than 2014, we may encounter some bridges that are out. As we uh, work the process that we talked about last week of support and structure to help us make the changes, as we seek God for heart change, as we uh, find ourselves involved in groups of people that are dealing with the same changes we want to make, as we find a support person, as we find a prayer partner, as we learn and read and study about the changes we want to make, as we come to worship, we make progress towards the change that we want to see in 2015. But some of us, as we make the progress, may discover that there are some bridges that are out. And we can see where it is we want to go, but we can't get there because the bridge is out. Maybe for some of us, a bridge that is out is a health bridge. We've been to the doctor, uh, antibiotics aren't working, surgery's not going to work, insurance won't cover the procedure, uh, it's chronic, and we can't get over the health issue. Or maybe the health issue isn't even ours. Maybe it's a parent's, maybe it's a child's, and we are the primary caregiver. Until that health issue is resolved, we're not going anywhere. We can see the change, but because of the health issue, the bridge is out, and we can't get there. Maybe some of us, uh, there's a bridge out that has to do with the past. We're working on where it is that we want to go, and there's an incident in the past, and we're scarred from it, and the pain is still there, and it's still very much alive in our lives. And we have to get across it to get to where it is we want to go. But the bridge is out, and we can't get through the pain, and we can't get through the scars, and we're stuck on this side. We can see where we want to go, but the bridge is out. And maybe for some of us, the bridge that's out is an addiction or some self-destructive habit or pattern that we've tried to break, that we've tried to get through, but we haven't been able to break it, we haven't been able to get through it, and we know that if we want to get the changes in 2015 that we're looking for, we have to get across the addiction, we have to get across the self-destructive habits, but there's no bridge, there's no way around it, there's no way over it, there's no way through it, and we can see where we want to go, but we can't get there. Maybe for others of us, the bridge is a financial bridge. There just aren't the financial resources, or maybe uh, we're buried under a load of debt. Credit card debt, car loans, mortgages, school debt. And it's just a mountain, and we barely keep up with the interest, let alone make any gain on the principal. And to get where we want to go, we've got to get through the debt, we've got to get this stuff paid off, but it's never going to get paid off. The bridge is out, and we can't get there. Maybe for others of us, the bridge it's out is a relational bridge. Maybe it's something in our marriage. Maybe it's something in our family. Maybe it's a work relationship. And things need to change, but we've tried, and we don't know how, and we don't know what to do, and there's no way around it, and there's no way through it. The bridge is out, and we just can't get there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Bridge is out? Yeah. When the bridge is out, it's frustrating. It's discouraging. 
It can drive you crazy. You can see it, but you can't get there. In Mark chapter 1, we uh, read about a guy who had a bridge out. He had leprosy. Not just a little leprosy, but he was covered with leprosy. Everybody familiar with leprosy? Yeah. Uh, for those of us who aren't, uh, leprosy is a skin disease. It, it starts as a sore, the sore grows wider, and it grows deeper, and it gets infected, and pus, and all that gross stuff, and uh, sometimes the sore eats all the way down through the skin to the bone. And it's ugly, and it's gross, and it's disgusting, and it's disfiguring. But the worst part about leprosy is not the sores. But when the leprosy eats down through the skin, it eats the nerves. And so, what's it like to have an arm that you can't feel? When you have an arm that, that you can't feel, you don't feel the pain, and so you have bang against something? How hard did you bang it? Yeah, you don't know. You don't even know that you banged it. It's bleeding, it's bruised, you don't know unless you see it. You bang it hard enough, you break it. You don't know it's broken. Unless you see it. And sometimes you don't see it, you don't notice it, and the bones begin to grow back together, but it's not straight anymore, it's crooked. Or uh, you get leprosy in your fingers. What happens if you don't feel your fingers? You bang them. You're fixing food and you chop with the knife. Or you're cooking and, and how hot's the stove? You don't know. There's no feeling in the fingers and the flesh starts to smoke. Maybe you see it, maybe you don't. You lose fingers, you break bones, you get disfigured. And as bad as all that was, in the day of this man, they didn't know what caused leprosy. So they thought it was contagious. And if you had leprosy, you had to tear your clothes. You couldn't put on makeup or, or fix your hair. I couldn't comb it, it's all disheveled. Uh, so that people could recognize from a distance that you were a leper. Why has he got torn clothes, Mommy? Why is his hair a mess? He's a leper. Stay away. And if somebody did dare to get close to you, you had to cover your mouth and yawn, unclean, unclean. Did I mention there's no cure? This guy's covered with leprosy. He knows what he wants to do. He knows where he wants to go. He knows the changes that he wants to have happen. But he can't get there. As long as he's got leprosy, the bridge is out. He's got a family. He's got a wife and kids. But he can't embrace them. He can't eat dinner with them. He can't provide for them. Job's long gone. Discouraged. Despairing. No hope. Bridges out. One day, he heard a rumor from a fellow leper about a prophet up north, a town called Capernaum. And the rumor went that this prophet healed everybody in the entire town. All the sick people, all the demon-possessed people, healed. And the man with leprosy recognized it as a rumor because of the prophet. No prophet, no prophet can heal the entire town. And maybe there were some healings. Maybe there were a couple of people that healed. Maybe there were a couple of demons that were cast out. Maybe a couple. Maybe it happened on a much smaller level than the man with leprosy thought. And he wondered if this prophet really did heal a couple of people. If this prophet can heal lepers. He didn't think anything more about it. Just a rumor. A few weeks later, conversation with his wife. 
had to happen at a distance of, of seven feet. She told him what she heard from the neighbor woman at the well when they were growing water that morning. It was about this prophet from up north, and he had left Capernaum, and he was working his way south through the towns and the villages, and he was healing people and casting out demons everywhere he went. Not just one or two, but a whole bunch of people had been healed, and there were crowds that were beginning to gather around him. And the neighbor woman said that it looks like he's headed towards our village, and maybe in a couple of weeks he'll be here. And the neighbor woman had one more piece of information. The prophet's name is... Jesus. And so the man and the woman began to talk. Well, you know, if he comes here, maybe, maybe there's hope for us. Maybe he can heal leprosy. And so for the first time in years, there was hope. Well, a couple weeks went by, and as the neighbor woman predicted, Jesus came to their town, went and taught their synagogue, told them incredible things, told them that the kingdom of heaven was near, told them that God loved them, and that he brought the kingdom near to them, and they could cry out to God for help, and God was ready to help. God was ready to heal, God was ready to save, God was ready to forgive, that it was going to happen here, it was going to happen now, that God cared about the people who were there in that town and village, and to prove his point, he began healing everybody in sight and casting out all kinds of demons, and, and old Philip, who had been bent all over and crippled for as long as anyone could remember was standing straight and crazy Betty was suddenly in her right mind and, and little Betty with the heart condition was healed and was running around with all the rest of the kids and Jesus stayed there for three days and his, the man's wife, the man covered with leopard, his wife comes out and tells him all the incredible things that's going on but there's a problem he's a leper he can't Go in town and see Jesus. All this incredible stuff. And he can't get it on. So as they talked, they came up with a plan. They would use the kids to watch where Jesus was going. And when Jesus left town, uh, they would tell the fastest kid, and the fastest kid would run to dad, and would tell dad which road Jesus was leaving town on. In the morning that Jesus left town, the fastest boy ran to tell dad, he's on the south road out of town. A man covered with leprosy made his way to the south road out of town saw Jesus and started walking towards Jesus. And the people who were around Jesus saw that he was a leper, and they scattered. But Jesus just stopped and watched the man. And the man who was covered with leprosy came to Jesus and fell on his knees and began to beg Jesus, please heal me. You're my only hope. If you don't heal me, I don't get healed. Please heal me. And he begged and he pleaded and he said, if you're willing, I know you can do it. By way of an answer, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man who was covered with leprosy. It had been years since anybody had touched him. And then Jesus said, I'm willing to be clean. Mark, the gospel writer, tells us that immediately the leprosy left. The bridge was restored. The bridge was repaired. He now had a future. He now had a hope. He now had a way to go forward. And you can write the rest of the story of what this man did and what happened in his life. But when bridges are out, Jesus is able to repair and to restore bridges. Now, what about us? What about our bridges? What about the bridges we have that are out? The bridges that have been washed out of the things that we can't get over, the things that we can't get across. Can Jesus restore and repair our bridges? And is he willing to do that for us? 
And the first question we answer quickly. Yes, he can repair and restore the bridges. There is nothing that is too hard for Jesus. There is nothing that he can't do. And the other question, is he willing? Well, our answer there is a little different. Our answer there sounds a lot like this. I'm sure he is willing to repair and restore your bridges. But I'm not so sure he would repair and restore mine. You see, I've done things. And maybe this bridge that's out is my punishment. Or we say, things have been done to me. And I'm broken. And I'm dirty. And there's no reason why Jesus should take any interest in me. Or we look around the room and we say, you know, I, I come every week and I do the best I can, but there are so many other people here who are doing so much better than I that if Jesus were to come in the place, he would take care of everybody else, but he wouldn't notice me because I'm not worth noticing. He'd take care of your bridges. But I don't know that you take care of mine. Well, truth is this. All that stuff, Jesus doesn't care about. He doesn't care what you've done. He doesn't care what's been done to you. He doesn't care how well it is that you think you follow or don't follow him. He doesn't care. He <coughs> loves you regardless of what it is that's gone on in your life, regardless of what happened, regardless of where it is that you've been. And he will restore your bridge. He will restore and repair the bridges that are washed out in your life, whatever your life is and whatever it is that they are. He doesn't care. He is here to restore and to repair bridges. Every single bridge for every single person. He comes with no exceptions for all of us. We say, well, where can I go get my bridge restored? It's not like I can go uh, on the south road out of Hamilton and, and see Jesus coming out of town. No, it's not like that at all. But what it is like is this. You remember his words? Quote of Jesus, wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of So he's here. Right here in the middle of all of this. Ready to heal, to repair, to restore washed out bridges. So, how do we approach it? In James, we read, is any among you in trouble? Bridge out. Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. We've done that this morning. Is anyone among you sick? Bridge out. Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Well, it just so happens that we have some elders here this morning. And uh, we had some oil. Well, it's gone now. But you know, <laughs> Jesus doesn't catch people in the small print. So, we got elders. We meant to have oil. And we come and be prayed for. And the prayer offered in faith, prayer offered in faith, prayer offered in faith, faith is just simply, I trust God. I believe what he says. If he says he'll heal, if I pray, then I'm going to pray for people to be healed, and it's in God's hand, and he'll do that. Uh, our elders have that kind of faith. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well, and the Lord, Jesus, will raise them up, bridges restored, and if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. If there's something that you've done that you are convinced 
is between you and Jesus, between you and getting your bridge repaired and restored, then tell it to the elder. You don't need to go into lots of detail. You can if you want. You can name what it is. You can just say, I've sinned. I've messed it up. And the elder will offer you forgiveness. In the name of Jesus, you're forgiven. And then you are healed. The prayer of a righteous person. A righteous person is not someone who's perfect, not someone who has it all together, but someone who has been made right with God through faith in Jesus Christ. And our elders fit that. There's a bunch of us here that fit that. And those kind of people, when they pray, their prayers are powerful and effective. Elijah, human being just like us, prayed that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't rain for three and a half years, and he prayed again, and it rained. And if Elijah can do that, James is saying, he's no different from us. And we can pray for bridges to be restored and be repaired. And they will. And they will. So what we're going to do is, during the last song, and band and singers can come forward, during the last song, uh, I'm going to have an elder team over here. I'm going to have an elder team over here. And as we sing, ask that you come and bring your offering. And if you have a bridge out that you would like to have prayed for, stop at the, uh, the elder station and get prayed for, for your bridge to return. And uh, we'll be here to pray for as long as anyone wants Pray for it.